A city screams in terror, a cooperative game against the world's most famous monsters. The village is under attack. Dracula, the mummy, Frankenstein's monster, his bride, and more are on the rampage, and your team of heroes must defeat them. Each monster offers an entirely unique challenge, and players can adjust the difficulty by playing against a new group of adversaries every game. Overcome them all before the horror overwhelms you. This is Horrified Universal Monsters. If you grew up on the Universal Monsters like I had, then you would understand how awesome it was to find this at my local Walmart. One day, my wife and I were browsing the toy aisles, and I was looking for at the board games, as I usually do, to see if there's anything that, you know, popped my interest. And right off the bat, this was sitting on the shelf, and it was like it contained this aura that just drew me to it. As you can see here, the stakes have been raised horrified. On the front cover, you've got Dracula. You've got the Bride of Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein's monster, the creature from the Black Lagoon, the mummy, the Wolfman, and the Invisible Man. You can play one to five players, ages 10 and up. Uh, I watched a few videos on how to play this game, and it doesn't look too complicated. It almost seems like it's similar to uh, back to the Future of the Back in Time board game. We'll be playing it later this evening, and then I'll return with my review of the ease in which the game is played, and the, in, the rules, the instructions, how easy they are to understand. Let's just take a second to appreciate this artwork on the front. Uh, I really love the colors they used on this. It really looks like there's fire, light from the fire shining on them. Uh, it, it's just, incredible artwork really makes me wish that universal's dark universe had gotten off the ground uh i watched the the new the mummy movie a few weeks ago it, it was okay they didn't really do dr jekyll and mr hyde very very well uh they didn't really stay true to the book for that i didn't really like tom cruise's character that much in it uh it it needed a better story but we'll go into that for another time uh, growing up, my cousin had the, just about the entire collection of Universal's Monsters figures. They were, I want to say they were like 8 to 12 inch tall, uh, pretty much solid plastic. Uh, I think the arms might have moved, but I can't remember. Uh, it's been so long since I saw them, but I always remember playing with them anytime I'd go over to their house. So let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the box. And as you can see on this side of the box, we have Universal Monsters Horrified, and we have the Bride of Frankenstein's Monster with some villagers inside her, uh, her head there. And then we'll flip it over. The creature from the Black Lagoon on this side with a nice swampy type area inside his head. We have the Wolfman. As you can see, his, uh, these trees kind of look like his fur. And then the full moon makes it look like his eye. That's pretty cool. And then we've got Frankenstein's monster. Now on the back, if we flip it back over. So on the back, as you can see, it says one to five players, ages 10 and up. 60 minutes is about how long it should take. To play the game so here's here's the game board uh we have some i think action cards i want to say uh the cards for each monster uh here are the monstrous miniatures there uh villager cards and then hero cards so 
Let's go ahead and open the box up and we'll take a look at the pieces individually. So the first thing you want to do when you open this up is there are four tabs. They're just plastic tape tabs cut on all four sides. And then there we go. As you can see here on this side, we've got Frankenstein's monster and the Bride of Frankenstein's monster. Uh, pieced together from human corpses and reanimated by electrical means, Frankenstein's monster will use his immense power to protect himself and the, his soulmate at any cost. Both beautiful and terrifying, the bride shares her groom's sinister and unnatural origin. Dangerously confused and alone, her inner rage can only be tempered by love. An Egyptian high priest buried alive and brought back to life through an ancient life-giving scroll. The mummy will stop at nothing as he seeks the reincarnated soul of his beloved. The undead vampire Dracula rises from his coffin each night to feed on the blood of his victims, using his charm and hypnotic abilities to ensnare them. An ancient amphibious species long thought extinct, the creature haunts the murky waterways looking for his next victim to drag to the chilly depths. The once brilliant chemist driven mad by a potion that renders him invisible, the invisible man stealthily stalks through the village unseen with an insatiable lust for power. Cursed by the bite of a changeling in wolf form, the wolfman is helplessly driven by his savage animal instincts to hunt down his prey. So there's each of the bios for the monsters. Now here we have the instruction book. Which we'll be using throughout this video to uh, name each, each piece on the, on the game. We have the game board, six monster mats, six or seven monster figures. 60 item tokens, 10 villager movers, 7 hero movers, 7 hero badges, 1 frenzy marker, 1 terror marker, 1 item bag, 3 dice, 30 monster cards, 20 perk cards, 5 reference cards. We have 1 boat, a camp overlay, 4 coffins, 1 Frankenstein dial, 1 bride dial, 1 precinct overlay, 1 laboratory overlay, 1 cure, 1 hunted emblem, one museum overlay, one soul sign, six scarabs. So there's the instruction manual. We'll go ahead and move, set that off to the side for right now. Here's the board. Let's take a moment to read that. We feel it would be a little unkind to present this game without just a word of friendly warning. You are about to unfold one of the strangest tales ever told. We think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you don't, that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to, well, you were warned. <laughs> we'll go ahead and move this off to the side for a minute while we open the board up and take a look. All right, so I'm not sure how well you can see this. It fills up more of the screen than I would like. All right, so up here is the terror level track uh, if the token reaches the skull before you clear all the monsters off the board then your team loses the instruction said this should take about an hour to play now you can travel as a hero you can travel along these cobblestone roads you cannot travel the waterways however the waterways are meant for the creature from the Black Lagoon. And generally there are items you can pick up along the way. Whenever you reach certain areas, uh, you use your turn to collect the items. So that's all I'm gonna go into on the board itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the items. Here we have the monster deck, and this is the perk deck. You could tell them apart because the perk deck is like a creamy white color and the monster deck is a black color. All right, so here are the overlays. We have the camp, which let's go ahead and move these cards out of the way. Let's see, we have the camp, which goes right here. We have the laboratory, which goes here. 
we have the precinct, which goes here, and we have the museum, which goes here. All right, so we have the hero badges. For this game, you can either play as the inspector, the professor, and Marianne here on Gilligan's Isle, the archaeologist, the mayor, we have a scientist, we have the explorer, and we have the courier. So here we have the terror marker, and that will go up here on the terror level tracker. And as I said, as we go along, the terror marker will travel along here until it reaches there, and then you lose. So we'll put that back at zero for now. So here we have the hero pieces. We have the mare, and as you can see, you put the red stand, you match the stand to the color of the background. So the mare is red, so she gets the red stand. And we'll go ahead and just put her, we'll put her at the precinct for right now. We have the professor, purple background, so purple stand. And he will go in the Institute, the Explorer, and sh green background, green stand. So we'll go ahead and put her, let's see, where do we want to put her? Um, we'll go ahead and put her in the crypt. All right. The inspector, which actually she should probably go in the precinct. Uh, the mayor should probably go in the mayor's, in the mansion. We have the scientist, blue black, blue background, blue stand, and she will go in the laboratory. The courier, pink background, pink stand, and he will go, let's see here. We'll put him at the shop. And then we have the archeologist, yellow background, yellow stand. And I think he would go best at the museum. And we have one boat and that'll go on the waterfront. We also have villager uh, pieces. Uh, no one actually plays as the villagers, uh, but when each hero reaches the villagers, they can use one of their actions to bring the villagers along with them. So here we have Elizabeth and she belongs in the tower. So let's see, where is the tower? Right there, it's the tower. We have Dr. Cranley who belongs at the precinct. We have Dr. Reed who belongs at the camp. And as you can see, these villager pieces get the clear stand. We have Male Maleva, who belongs at the shop. We have Fritz, the hunchback, who belongs at the institute. We have Professor Pearson, who belongs at the museum. We have Lucy, who belongs at the mansion. We have Wilbur and Chick, who belongs in the dungeon. We have Reinfeld, who belongs at the hospital. There, right there. And we have Maria, who belongs at the camp. We also have this frenzy marker, uh, which I think once this hits, um, it gives off the monster's frenzy attack or whatever. So for right now, we're just going to put that on the bridge. So here we have Dracula's coffins and there's a broken side and then an unbroken side. Sorry about that. Broken side and unbroken side. One of these goes in the graveyard. One, uh... Let me double check this a minute. So one goes in the graveyard, one goes in the dungeon, one goes in the crypt, and one goes in the cave. We also have the bag, which contains the item tokens. And these are just items which uh, you can place on the uh, board and collect as you go. 
There's 60 item tokens here. All right, we have the soul sign. I'm not sure exactly where that goes for right now. We'll figure out whenever we play it later. We have the scarab markers, which there are six of those. I'll put those off to the side right now. We have a cure. Not sure where that goes either. We have the dials for Frankenstein's monster and his bride, which I guess can go off to the side here. And we have a hunted emblem. I guess this goes into play whenever uh, one of the heroes becomes hunted. <laughs> uh, I have not read the entire instructions yet, nor have I watched the entire uh, gameplay video. But here we have three dice. Safe in their baggie. And now we'll get into the monsters. First up is Frankenstein's monster. The bride. There she is. The creature from the Black Lagoon. Looks like Dracula starts off at the laboratory. Okay, I want to say the mummy starts off at the museum. Maybe. So the uh, each monster has his own card. I should have checked this one first. Sorry about that, guys. Each monster has his own card. And on these cards tells where each monster goes. So the creature from the Black Lagoon uh, should place the creature on the board at the lagoon. So the lagoon is right there. Okay. Place Dracula on the board at the crypt. So he's going to go there. Play Frankenstein on the board at the graveyard. Okay. Place the invisible man on the board at the inn. Okay, so he's going to go at the inn. Place the bride on the board at the dungeon. Okay, where's the dungeon? Oh, dungeon's up here. Yep. Okay. And then we place the wolf man on the board at the mansion. So, as I said, we have the creature from the Black Lagoon, which belongs at the lagoon. Uh, Dracula belongs in the crypt. Uh, Frankenstein at the graveyard. Uh, his bride in the dungeon. The mummy belongs at the museum. And the wolfman belongs in the mansion. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and show you each of their cards. As you can see, the cards show where each of their uh, weaknesses are. So the coffins go in the cave, the dungeon, the crypt, and the graveyard, which is where I've got them. And then the back shows the monster setup. Okay, so that's Dracula. Dracula is seeking blood. Destroy his four coffins so you can subdue him. Dark charm. Place the current player's hero in Dracula's space. For the mummy, his uh, scarabs go on there once you collect them. The mummy has risen. Decipher the tablet so you can return him to his tomb. Fortify the curse. Flip the lowest scarab face down. Okay. Uh, entomb the mummy. In the mummy's space, use uh, plus nine to defeat him. Uh, at, at the museum, use whatever that is. To move the scarabs, make as many moves as the item's strength. Frankenstein and his and the bride must be educated so they can live peacefully. Here comes the bride. Move the bride one space toward Frankenstein. In Frankenstein's space, use yellow, or in the bride space, use blue. Increase the monster's humanity by the item's strength, and move the monster that many spaces. So that's where their dials go, right there. When the monsters meet, 
If both dials show the monster's faces, they are defeated. Otherwise, increase the terror level, place Frankenstein at the graveyard, and place the bride at the dungeon. The creature strikes from the depths. Locate his water retreat, watery retreat, so you can oust him. Rock the boat. Move the boat one space backward, so the boat can travel along these waterways as well. At the camp, use yellow, red, or blue to move the boat to the next X, matching the item's color. In the creature space, use yellow, red, or blue to defeat him. The wolfman is tormented by his form. Develop an antidote and administer it to him. Every person in the wolfman's space is hit. <clears throat> At the laboratory, place blue on a spot below that matches the item's strength. If all spots below are filled, take the cure. In the wolfman's space, use the cure and plus six to defeat him. The invisible man has gone mad. Collect proof of his misdeeds so you can catch him. Move the invisible man two spaces toward the closest villager. At the precinct, place yellow, red, or blue on a spot below the matches that matches the item's location. The invisible man's space, use nine, a plus nine to defeat him. And there you have it, guys. There's the board set up and all the pieces. Uh, to the game So we're gonna take a break. We're gonna play the game and then I'm gonna return with a review of the easiness in Which this game is played All right guys, so my family and I played this game last night and we really liked it. My kids loved it. And my wife liked it um, It took us a little longer than an hour because we had to read all the instructions and the directions and learn how to play it started off pretty rough but once we got the hang of it as things went on it was okay uh there were a few problems it doesn't really clarify in the instructions uh how to attack the monsters or what to do exactly if the monsters attack it it does say you discard a uh, one of your uh, items if they attack to defend yourself but it doesn't really say if it has to be a certain number uh, attack points on the items. And when you're attacking a monster, uh, like to win the game, uh, it doesn't really tell like how many attack points a certain item has to have uh, in order to defeat the monster. Also, we had some issues uh, learning how to uh, control the boat. Uh, one of the uh, one of the cards does say uh, that you know the boat moves one space or whatever. But do we use that whenever we land on that location? Uh, because as one of the location uh, cards, do we start the boat off at the dock and can one of our one of the uh, heroes? Uh, move alongside the boat and control the boat or what so it doesn't really clarify that I'm gonna have to go back I'm gonna have to watch uh, watch some of the gameplay videos on YouTube I'm going to need to reread very thoroughly the directions uh, one thing I've found with these games is the directions could be a lot clearer and a lot more in depth uh, so we know for sure that we're playing it 100% accurately. Uh, other than that, it is a very fun game. I really enjoyed it. My kids enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to turn this into a regular family game night game. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.